is actually hard the follow ups make it a bit tricky although if you had watched it so you should be able to solve it uh, it just simply says okay, we are given an integer array nums and we have to return an array called as answer such that answer of i okay it's again an array and that specific element of the array which is answer of i is equal to the product of all the elements of nums except nums of i and uh, the product of any prefix or suffix of nums is guaranteed to be guaranteed to fit in 32 bit integer because like you might end up thinking are what if i am doing a product I mean, that's a question you will ask the interviewer itself the interviewer will just say this specific line that's it i'll tell you what you have to ask the interviewer first question is that is it possible that again the final answer maybe maybe that is in line or basically in limit of our range but what if what if maybe some partial answer we maybe like it can happen that for, okay, for some answer of i it is under integer or 32 bit limit but for others maybe it is in under 64 bit limit so you have to ask what is the what is the maximum a product can go and again like maybe your interviewer might not directly give you the answer but he might give you okay Arin, i'm giving you that your maximum value of nums of i is something so he might give you okay your maximum value of nums of i is 30 and then he'll give you your n sizes 25 so you can easily see that even if i put the maximum value and then i keep on multiplying it still i will be actually be under the maximum product of 3 into 26 that's it so either he can give you the actual product range or he can give you okay iron it will not go beyond it or he might give you the actual value okay there are nums values this and n values this maximum values now we have to write an algorithm for that and it, it should run in o of n time okay that's it's given but again you will go in from very scratch in the interview without using the division operation oh why he has said that i don't know i don't know this interview will let, not tell you this i will skip this i think i will have not heard it so what end up will happening or what's the answer so if we are at this so i have to take the product of all the other elements except this so the answer for this is 2 into 3 6 into 2 24 so answer is answer is 24 okay when i am at 2 i have to take the product of all the other elements except this okay 1 and 3 4 so 1 into 3 into 4 which is 12 if i am at 3 i have to take the product of all the other elements except 3 so 1 into 2 which is 2 into 4 which is 8 answer is 8 so you saw i have to simply take the product so very good for solution simply says that bro simply do one thing you are at a specific i loop in loop in the entire in the entire j where i is equal to j skip that and for others take the product that gonna be the answer same way for the next i you will again loop in the entire j where i equal to j skip that for the others take in the product and that's gonna be your answer for the next j so you saw you will go on to every i again and again so which is o of n time for every i i am looping in the entire j so that will be again a o of n time so it's be o of n square which is very for sure will not pass or basically it's for sure like not pass in terms of the program but also in the, in the terms of interview he will ask you to optimize it so you saw the simple code will look like okay you will go up till n for every n i will have to get grab the product considering which means i will loop on the entire j but if i equal to j skip it or continue it but for the others take the product and that gonna be answer for answer of i but yeah it's o of n square which is not what we require so we'll simply go on and do one thing we were doing the product right so what ultimately we wanted was this element should be a product of all the elements except this element all right this element this element's answer is product of all the other elements except this <laughs> rn which means it is one into three into four that's the answer for this two uh can't we simply say one thing that i am simply doing one thing okay the one thing i'm doing is i'm doing one if i take the multiplication of all the elements all the elements which is one into two into three into four right now i want that this should not occur as simple as that so simply do a division simply do a division huh. bro so i'll get the answer as one into three into four okay so i can just pre-compute the multiplication of the entire array i'll just pre-compute okay the final product multiplication is one into two into three into four that's the answer maybe it is the answer we know it is 24 now to get the answer for first i'll simply say this is the product i will divide that by my current nums of i so i'll simply do a division by one 
okay one 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 cancel answer is this okay now when i am at 2 i simply do a, a division by 2 so by 2 okay when i am at 3 i'll simply do a division by 3 when i am at 4 i'll simply do a division by 4 oh, bro 4 answer is 6 so you saw just simply do a pre-computation of the product and then at every number of i you can simply divide by that number of i itself great that's super great <laughs> So you'll say Aryan, that's the best solution. It will it will just take O of n time in one pre-computation of product and then again O of n time just to go on and compute this answer of i array. And again, no extra space used except a variable called as product. So it will be O of n time and O of one space. That's the most optimal solution. True, right? It, it would have been true considering that you have to ask your interviewer. Again, what is again, what is the bottleneck of this? What is the bottleneck of this? Like what is the possible chance that that this operation can fail although like by so far you have read the question so you must have known that why it can fail but i'll tell you so what's happening is it is saying nums of zero into nums of one into up till up till again nums of n minus one divided by you are doing a division by nums of i so multiplication again just look at this entire stuff and tell me what is a possible case this entire stuff can fail now I am simply, simply asking you, what is the possible case when your division can fail? Division can fail if the below number is 0. If the below number is 0, your division will fail. And that you would have checked if you would have tried for this specific example. Because if I take the product, it will be minus 1 into 1 into 0 into minus 3 into 3. Now, the product will actually be a 0. But if I go and ask, okay, for this... Uh, I'll do a 0 by minus 1. Okay, answer is 0. For this, 0 by 1. Answer is 0. For this, ah, 0 by 0. Division I am doing by 0, which will give me undefined value. But you can see, answer is 9. <laughs> so, division strategy for us will fail. Thus, it is very important for you to ask the interviewer, Sir, what is the nums of i value? Can we have a 0 or not? If we would, if we would have said that zero is not possible for our case if zero is not possible this would have been the best possible solution right and again easiest one you'll also see again other best possible best possible solution but this, this would have been the best possible solution for us but we saw that okay we in our case would have a zero so the solution will not work so although i'll show you the code but this will not work this will give you a runtime error and you will also not be able to handle this specifically for a zero case. It is not that, okay, Aryan, if I'll just check if my nums of i is zero, then what? If your nums of i is zero, then you have to again go and compute for the entire part portion. And again, it will be of n square, right? Aryan, I'll do some pre-computation. <laughs> That's the next step, which you can do ultimately without even doing it for a division itself. So, firstly, uh, I'll show you that you will firstly find the product of the entire array and then you can simply keep on dividing that by nums of i to get the answer of i. But again, that's a O of n and O of n time, but it will give you a runtime error, which is simple, saying division by zero, it is not allowed. Now, for sure, uh, as we looked, looked on to the above approach, we saw what's the issue in the above approach. Above approach says, okay, I have a product, which is 1 into 2 into 3 into 4. I was doing a division by 2. For, for this case, when I was at 2, I was doing a division by 2. So, ultimately, this 2 was being cancelled. Okay. Now, when I was at 3, so I was doing 1 into 2 into 3 into 4, division by 3. So, I, I was doing like this. Now, um, I wanted to, I wanted to not do the division. So, I am just saying, okay, what if I just simply remove this? I don't want to do the division. What if I simply remove this? So, I simply am saying that, can't I, can't I? what if if i am at nums of i what if if i had this product if i had this product how it would have been so great right if i am at this specific nums of i what if i had this product what if i had this product then it would be super great so oh which means i mean you are saying that uh, um, you will have to compute this no i'll say pre-compute this and that too optimally what do you mean by that Arin? simple what I'm saying is do a pre-computation. Again, you see that I wanted both. I wanted prefix product also and suffix product also. So ultimately, I want both prefix product also and suffix product also. So if I am at nums of i, I will take prefix product and suffix product. 
So I am just simply saying, okay, bro, let's build, let's build that this prefix product and this suffix product. It is same way saying building a prefix sum and suffix sum. Prefix sum is a standard concept in our programming. So now I will use the strategy of pre-computing my prefix product. Again, for this, again, remember the fact, maksat nigul. Remember the fact that for this i, you want to take all the other, which means your prefix would should should include your again your prefix of i. Either you can have if conditions and stuff, but what you want is your prefix of i. Your prefix of i here should compute every portion, which is this product. Your suffix of i i here again that's a prefix of i. That's a suffix of i. It should contain every product marked here. Right? Okay. So let's now build it again. Remember this fact. And now let's keep on building. Okay. I will start it from here itself. I will not go in here. I mean, why are you not going here? I'll tell you. But I'm just trying to build the answer first. And then from the answer, I'll backtrack on how I will actually be building that. So for this too, which means the prefix of i, prefix of i array, again, I'll build in from the left side. For the suffix of i, I always try to build in again in the drawing itself. I build in from the right side. That's how suffix work. So for this too, it says that my prefix product should be there. This one. Okay, so it should be one. Again, this specific element, this specific element, which is nums of zero. So I am saying it will be my nums of zero. Okay, or or better, let's write nums of zero itself. Nums of zero. Now, now, uh, when I am at this specific i, it needs to be a product of this portion. So I can simply say whatsoever I have got previously as a product, simply multiply that with the current, this specific nums of one. So so earlier it was only one if i am at i i'll say i want the product of these two values i have got one value already which is one so i'll just simply multiply that by two okay so i'll just say prefix of i minus one again this is i so this will be prefix of i minus one multiplied with nums of i minus one so i'll just say one into two prefix of i minus one which is this into nums of i minus one which is this okay now when i am at this specific i again Prefix of i minus 1 multiplied with i mu multiplied with nums of i minus 1. So prefix of i minus 1 multiplied with nums of i minus 1. So you saw now I have prefix values at every i. Now, okay, great. Now, Arin, what to put here? It's a default value. Like, okay, uh, for this, there is no prefix. So for this, there is no matter whatsoever you put. <laughs> One thing, you have to put something which should not affect your answer. Right now, you are doing multiplication. You are doing multiplication. If you are remember in the prefix sum approach, in the prefix sum approach, we are doing a prefix sum. We are doing a sum. What is something? What is something that you do an addition or subtraction of that your sum is not affected? That's a number zero. What something if you do a multiplication as you are doing a multiplication on a product? What something if you do a product? It is not affecting your answer. It's a one. So by default in prefix sum, you place a value zero in prefix product, you will place a value one. So by default, I should place a value one itself. And that you can see also, you will actually take, if you were at nums of i, you would have taken prefix of i minus one into nums of i minus one. And that's how you would have got this answer one. Okay, great. Now my prefix is built. Same way I can build my suffix. Again, you will see that this actually will help us. If I am at a specific i, my prefix of i will be pointing and saying, okay, it is one into two. I can simply multiply my prefix of i, multiply by suffix of i. Same way I'll build. Okay. If I am at this again, I'll start from this here itself. I'll say uh, my suffix of i, if I am at this specific i, my suffix of i, it should have only one element, which is 4. Okay, great. Now, when I am at this specific i, again, answer should be 4 into 3. But I will simply say my suffix of i plus 1 multiplied with i, nums of i plus 1. So I'll just say suffix of i plus 1 multiplied with nums of i plus 1. Okay. Now when I am this i, suffix of i plus 1 multiplied with, multiplied with nums of i plus 1. So 4 into 3 multiplied by 2. Suffix of i plus 1 multiplied with nums of i plus 1. And that's how again, by default value 1. So that's how you have simply build your prefix and suffix array. Now, whenever you are at any of the specific i, your prefix of i says the prefix value, your suffix of i will say suffix value and then you can simply multiply, just say okay, your answer of i is nothing but prefix of i multiplied by suffix of i and that's the answer for all the i's. This pre-computation took O of n time, this took O of n time and again to compute the answer, 
again it took a o of n time so uniquely it took o of 3 n time and that's a o of n time but you saw that i have to compute the entire prefix sum array which will take the space for us entire suffix sorry entire prefix prot array entire suffix prot array which will take the space for us o of n space and o of n space here also in the suffix part so yeah that's gonna be a space which is used for us a bit more but yeah that will work for us so what we did ultimately is we took a prefix and a suffix prot array by default if you have seen we initialize that with the value of one because one for a product will not affect the answer for a sum we would have by default initialized with a zero value okay then i will just simply compute the prefix product same way i told you prefix of i is prefix of i minus one multiplied with nums of i i minus one as i showed you in the dry run above same way I, I am going on again. You can see I am going on from the index equal to 1 itself. Here I am going from the index equal to n minus 2 itself. Same way, suffix of i is suffix of i plus 1 multiplied with nums of i plus 1. Cool. Now, when the suffix and prefix are pre computed, then I will go on to my answer to compute the answer value, and that will be prefix of i multiplied with suffix of i for the specific answer of i, and that's going to be our answer. So you saw. Time took for us is O of n and space also was O of n because of the prefix and suffix computation. Again, it's O of 3n. The time is O of 3n. Space is O of 2n. But yeah, still, it's, it's O of n and O of n. Now, the interview will ask you, that was nice. That was super nice. Can you please optimize it? Now, uh, your task is to optimize it, which means, which means, again, which means that you have to build your final answer array I'll go on to the above optimization itself. Let's 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 take the above thing only. So now your ultimate thing was that you have to build your answer of i. Optimizing this, optimizing itself, it can be two ways to optimize it. One way is that earlier I was using a three n time and two n time. Maybe the interviewer is asking us, can we improvise this two n into a n or or the three n into a n? Maybe like that, or maybe he's trying to trying to say us that optimize and use no space at all. That's other optimization. Usually, no space at all, which means O of 1 space is a big optimization. So, we will think of for that specific thing first. Maybe we can also, maybe mean, well, we can also optimize this O of 3n space to O of, sorry, O of 3n time to O of 2n time. But that's a later part of optimization. Because still, it will be O of n itself. Now, um, now my main task is, uh, I have to optimize the space because time will for sure remain O of n. That can never be reduced because I have to go and iterate on the every element. That's for sure required. But now, uh, iterate on the specific array. That's required. Uh, space, maybe it's not required. So maybe I try to eliminate the space. But I, I have to get to know if I am at specific i, I should be knowing this prefix some value. Uh, bro, one thing. What you can do is, uh, you can do one thing that you know one thing right you this answer of i because this answer array you have to return so this answer of i will not be counted as an extra space right so this because this is the answer required for us so this is not the extra space so what i can do is i can imagine my answer of i as the prefix sum array itself so i will populate my answer of i considering it's a prefix sum array so i'll do one thing okay this exact same stuff which i did and i made a new prefix sum array i'll do exact same stuff in answer of i Exact same stuff. Rn, but then uh, what about the suffix? You will have to still make a new array for suffix. That's the reason I'll, told, I'll tell you. So, okay, I just did exact same stuff in my answer of i. Considering it's a prefix array and I did the exact same stuff. Okay, this is 1, this is 1, this is 1 into 2 and this is 1 into 2 into 3. Now, now, your, now your prefix sum array is made. What was happening in your suffix sum array? You were building the suffix sum array, and then when you have built it, when you have built it, then you were multiplying that suffix of i multi in the actual uh, prefix of i, right? This is what you were doing to build the answer. Prefix of i is already made in the answer, so I can simply say one thing, right? If to compute my actual final answer of i, final answer of i, so I can simply say answer of i, final answer of i will be answer of i multiplied by suffix of i. I can say that, but are in suffix, you have to compute. No, I, I, I will not compute that. What I will do is, I will just simply, what is this? Again, if I ask you, what is this? This is simply a product which is being propagated. It is a 1 multiplied with 4, 1 into 4. Now, a 4 is a product multiplied with 3. 
Four into three is a product multiplied by two. So I can simply say that it's a product which is being which is being propagated. So by default, the product value is one. Now when I am at i, existing product value, which is for sure one, multiplied with nums of i plus one. What's happening? Okay. So for this, the new product, the new product is existing product value which is one multiplied with nums of i plus one. Nums of i plus one. So you saw what happened that I am keeping track as a product. So I can simply say, bro, bro, if you are at a I, now let's imagine that this is gone. This is entire, entire prefix is gone, right? Now you are at specific I. Again, I start off exact same stuff. I start off from N minus two. This is N minus two index. I start, I'll start from, from this index itself. I itself. So you will say product is by default to one. So for this value, the product so far would have been product which is one which you had been taking earlier multiplied with nums of i plus one nums of i plus one so your product will become four now simply in answer five multiplied with the product so your product so far has become four okay four so again you multiplied with the product and this product value is actually a four so far okay now simply move on your right i is moved on simply take the product take the product take the product which is four so far multiplied with the nums of i Okay, multiply with nums of i plus one, sorry, i plus one. So it will be four into three. And you'll see exact same stuff. Okay, so I'll do again multiply with product, which is again the product here is four into three. Simply move on. Okay, now your i is here. Again, take the product, which is four into three, multiplied with nums of i plus one, multiplied with two. So your product now become a four into three into two. Again, multiply with product, which is now four into three into two. And that's how, rather than taking a suffix array separately, you can just keep on building every element of the suffix array parallelly and keep on multiplying with that answer of existing i value. And that's how you don't need the prefix of i because you did it in your answer of i itself. And you would not need your suffix of i also because you're computing this value, this value and multiplying it parallelly, parallelly, parallelly in your answer. And to compute any value, you just only need the previous value. So you can just remove every other extra space previously. And this is the only operation which you needed. And thus you see, you are, you are not, not using any extra space at all. So how the code will look like exactly same as we did above. It's just that in the very beginning, in the very beginning, my answer of i will act as a prefix of i. So again, answer of i minus 1 multiplied with nums of i minus 1. Okay, now you will see your prefix of i is built. Now, compute the suffix of i. How? Simple. Suffix product, I will just keep on doing again. Exact same, exact same. From n minus 2 to 0. I will keep on building. My current suffix product is again, existing product, which is this multiplication multiplied with the nums of i plus one so i have got my suffix product right now okay multiply that with answer of i because answer of i was your prefix of i so multiply that with the answer of i you will get the new or final answer of i because existing answer of i was the prefix of i multiply that with the suffix product it is actual answer of i now so this is the answer which you can return and you will see the time is now o of n and o of n which is reduced from O of 3 and to O of 2n. And also space is no more used because I'm using just a one single variable, which is product. Again, this is not counted as an extra space. This is a space used by the program to solve the program. Cool. So now my time is O of 2n and space is O of 1. Again, this O of 2n is O of n itself. And that's how you can simply solve it. Cool. Thank you for watching. But again, I hope that you guys got it. Again, go in the stepwise order and tell and ask the proper questions to the interviewer. What needs to be required? Because requirement gathering is very important. And that is what shows that you consider all the edge cases also properly. Now, if you liked it, can you please find the right And yeah, bye-bye. Take care. Goodbye. Bye-bye.